Okay, so in the, the last video um, uh, about uh, how to look through data, I showed you uh, this tool of Excel where we could basically, for a whole uh, array of, of data for each sample, so we might have, we had 12 samples, we had loads and loads of different kinds of measurements of, of chemistry and, and mineralogy, we could basically correlate uh, each of those variables with everything else uh, and search through and find out uh, which of the variables were correlating with each other significantly, um, which kind of help us look through data. Okay, so uh, there is one thing I just want to, to give a caveat to that, which I forgot to mention in the video, was that even though some of these correlations look like they are statistically significant, uh, they can still occur by chance. Okay, so what we've done here is we've, we've used conditional formatting and we've calculated um, down at the bottom here the critical R value for uh, a, a, a sample set where there are um, 12 data points, so there are, uh, with a regression with two parameters, um, there are 10 degrees of freedom, okay? Um, and then we've seen which ones are greater than that. And we've, we've that R critical is at the 95% um, level. So there's basically a 5% chance that um, at this level of correlation, um, that could occur randomly by chance. So some of these data could basically still be spurious correlations. So we do need to be quite careful when we're interpreting that. So I'll just um, just go through an example where I, could, I basically show you uh, or demonstrate that this, this can lead to some, some uh, basically spurious correlations, even by doing this statistical test. So I'll just get a new sheet um, and I'll just make some fake data. Okay, so uh, we'll make uh, some, give us some parameters. So parameter A, and I guess the next one will be equal to, uh, uh, we're just going to uh, type a quick formula here. Um, look at that, uh, where I'm going to add uh, um, basically 1 to A, B, C. So it just goes A, B, C all the way across. Um, uh, plus 1, and that should b and then i could take this across and give me say uh x y z so 26 uh data variables and let's say we're going to have one two um give myself 12 samples just to be consistent with kind of before um and then i'm just going to give myself some 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 random data so uh equals ram so no computer can truly create a random number, but this is, you know, for our purposes, just good enough. And if I copy this across, I then get a whole big, enormous array of random data. Now, uh, every time you do a calculation in the spreadsheet, it'll recalculate all these values. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of these data. I'm going to copy them, control C for copy and then right click, I'm just going to paste them all as values now. Okay, so you see, because I did something, it recalculated the values, but now they are all, um, I guess, all random numbers in between zero and one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, just quickly do that um, uh, that correlation analysis with uh, the, the analysis tool pack. So if I go to data, okay, go to data analysis, correlation, Okay, so I'm going to correlate all of these things against each other. Now, I've already kind of selected the data or, or at least the array correct points on this. So I'm just going to go and make sure that that is selected all of the lovely, lovely data. So I'm just going to click here and make sure that we've got everything we do. Um, and I'm going to output it um, into the same spreadsheet. So rather than have a new, new spreadsheet, I'm just going to put it down here for no reason labels in the first row so that's abc all that kind of stuff um and it's organized by columns so let's click okay and that gives us this lovely enormous kind of data array here okay so i'm going to do exactly the same uh thing as before so i'm going to basically go back to our correlation thing here and, and basically just have the same half critical value copy that to this spreadsheet so just just to reiterate that the only parameters here that we can really adjust are the um, alpha, so our confidence interval. So this is set at 0 0.05, so that's the 95% confidence interval. So we're looking at basically a 5% chance of these correlations occurring by, by basically random variation of data. Um, our sample size is 12, so our degrees of freedom are 12 minus 2, 10. Um, 
So that gives us that number there, which is really good. So we're looking for any values of R that are, that are greater than that um, R critical. So we guess highlight all the data. Because I had some problems doing this last time. You have to start the highlighting up in the first cell up here. Um, then go to home, conditional formatting, uh, more rules, because we like rules. Uh, use a formula. So I'm going to say yeah, equal the absolute value of stuff in our table. Delete the dollar signs, because they're helpful. Um, when that is greater than our article, I'll set that to, uh, let's set it to orange, because everyone likes orange, right? We can also make the uh, font uh, purple for no reason. Um, so we apply that, uh, and you can see here that we've We've highlighted um, some correlations here. There's a nice negative correlation, uh, positive correlation here um, that have occurred out of these random data. And this kind of is a bit odd because the, the data are random. There shouldn't be any correlations. But because we are making so many different comparisons here, okay, then and we're looking at the 95% confidence interval. So effectively, every one in um, 20 of our correlations should by chance, appear to be significant at the 95%. I mean, that's just, just you know, how it is. So just a word of, word of caution, we could have a look at one of those. So we could look at maybe the correlation between A and Q. That appears to be uh, significant. Uh, insert uh, graph, we could look at that. And you see, it, we do get a nice, seemingly negative trend on that. We could, we could maybe add a trend line and that might convince us off that that's maybe some kind of real variability in the data, um, but actually it's not, okay? This is just random data, and because we're just correlating enough things against enough other things, we are finding patterns in that data that are not. So uh, just a word of caution, um, this is sometimes called p-hacking. Uh, we could maybe, was that the highest? There's another 0.7 here. Um, you can, sometimes if you, if you look for it, basically through enough data, you can find some really quite large uh, positive or negative correlations just because uh, you're looking at a large data set. Okay. So when you're looking at a correlation, if you do find one um, by, by this approach, um, that's great, but you do need to think about whether that is a real correlation. Is there an actual underlying kind of theory about why those things should correlate together? Um, if there's not, then it might just be that you're just looking through so much data that some of it will randomly by chance correlate with each other. Okay, so uh, yeah, just a, a word of warning, uh, extra bonus video, which I'm sure you were waiting for with baited, um, you know, stuff. I'll stop there. Right, we go, stop there. Stop, stop, stop.